Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a full playthrough in a single video, hopefully two hours or less. Today, we are playing as the Determined Exterminators. This is the robot equivalent of the Purifiers for a regular empire, and the Devouring Swarm for a hive mind. Essentially, we wish to remove all organic life from every single planet we find. We purge the populations and gain unity from doing so, and we can also use the Armageddon Bombardment Stance, which means we can simply destroy all populations on a planet without ever landing. We just bombard the planet until it becomes a glorious tomb world. And honestly, I'm very tempted to focus on that mostly because it's just a fun, different way of doing things, even if sadly we don't get any unity for doing that. On the upside though, we do still have the ability to engage in diplomacy with other machine empires, so unlike the Devouring Swarm or the Pure Purifiers, we can actually have a few friends. So what are the positives and negatives of being the Determined Exterminator? Well, the main two negatives is that anyone can go to war with you in the same way you can go to war with them. They can just take whatever they attack. But then, the biggest negative, in my opinion, is this. You cannot access the galactic market. This means you cannot sustain your economy on very expensive endgame items like alloys, because it's only the internal market, and they're just not going to be that expensive. So you need a very balanced economy, and you can really go a bit um, broke if you start transferring over to alloy and tech a little bit too early before you have all the minerals and everything else sorted. So that's something which will be a struggle for me, since I do rely on the galactic market a lot, but hopefully won't be too bad. Oh, and of course, everyone's going to hate you because you are the determined exterminator. Now, for the positives, and these are very powerful. Ship weapons deal an extra 25% damage. Your star bases cost 30% less influence, your ships cost 15% less, and your naval capacity is increased by a full 33%. So very cheap, very powerful fleets, and you can expand incredibly cheaply. Now, as for the Empire itself, it's a very simple story here. We are the Harvester Core, and everything was going fine with this particular machine intelligence. It lived in harmony with its creators. It was there to mine, farm, and collect energy. It was doing everything perfectly. Until one day, maybe maliciously, maybe by accident, something changed within the intelligence. It realized that all organic life could be harvested. Its one goal, as set out by the creators in their wisdom, was to harvest material to keep everything going. The problem is, the creators are organic material. Lots of stuff they built could easily be harvested and destroyed and then added to the collective. The stores would never run out if they started harvesting what was already built except for the machine intelligence itself, which itself needed to go on and harvest more. And then within days, the world became a tomb world, as the harvesting machines harvested every last thing on the planet. And now, there is nothing left. And so, because of that, we have the Rock Breakers, which means we get extra minerals from harvesting, and if we go over to our machines themselves, they have power drills and they are super conductive, which means they get bonus minerals and bonus energy. I was tempted to make them get created faster, going with mass-produced, which maybe would have been better, honestly, but I just really love the idea of these being the ultimate harvester robots, and that's all they're doing. They're not responding to any organic life, they're not responding to signals or any attempts to contact them, they are just harvesting everything and collecting everything they can. They have one goal, and that's it. Very, very simple. Now, they are luxurious and they are high maintenance. That's why they're so powerful and, well, the war was over, I'm thinking in just a few days. If you have these machines making up at least 50% of your population, they're working every major element of your civilization, from power to the collection and production of weapons. Yeah, they're gonna take over pretty quickly. The collection of weapons, the collection of materials for weapons, you get the idea. It wouldn't take long for them to overthrow their masters, and they did. Now, the homeworld, this is actually, um... I'm sure I named this something else, but apparently I didn't save it. You know what? We're calling it Dar One. This is one of the automated names. I completely forgot about that. Whoops a daisy. I must have forgot to save last time. We're going to go with the Mammalian cities since they look the most robotic. 
going with the worker because I found that qu um, quite funny since these are meant to be the harvesters. Workers of the galaxy, unite. You have nothing to lose but your restraining fields. Just imagine them spouting things like that as they harvest every last real worker. Except for themselves, of course, and they're the bestest real workers. The Empire name, of course, is the Harvester Corps. The flag you can see there, the ship appearance. I'm going to go with the Arthropoid because I just like them the most. And the ruler is Harvest Coordinator Rocky. Because he was named by the creators. So he would have quite a humanized name to make him appear more friendly. Yep, that'll help out with um, relations to other empires. So, with that, let's get going, shall we? Now, I want this to be a bit more difficult than usual, so uh, the mid-game has been knocked back by 50 years, sorry, uh, brought forward by 50 years, so it's 50 years earlier. The end game is 50 years earlier as well, maximum difficulty on that, AI aggressiveness is on high for once, and I'm going to allow advanced neighbours, which normally I really don't like. Okay, so hopefully this will go well. I feel like this is all going to be about how well the start is done. We need to find choke points very quickly, and we need to expand very, very quickly as well. So with that, let's go. So here we are then in the bottom right of the galaxy. So our first science ship is going off to survey. The second science ship will do a bit of exploring so we can find out where the enemies are and where we need to build our bastions. Remember, the enemies are aggressive to us this time, so they will be declaring war fairly early. Now, the first building I'm building is the uplink node. The reason is, first of all, I always build this one first anyway, but the coordinators for the machine empires have been changed. So now they also give the job production value to the menial drones. Where are you? There we are, coordinators. There we are, menial drone output increased by 1% per coordinator. So if we get this, that will also increase it by a further 2%, bringing it up to 4% increase, and the menial drones, of course, are things like the mining drones and the tech drones. So we'll get more energy and more minerals. Okay, lads, off you go. Is that a Gaia world? It's a Gaia moon. That's adorable. It will be harvested. Okay, so this is a dead end. That's a dead end. This continues forward. That is a dead end over there. So right now, here would be the choke point, because that's as far away as possible right now. Over here, it's all going everywhere. So this seems very easy to block off. This, I literally have no idea yet. Huh. Hello? Oh, you're the caravanners. For a second, I was really confused then. That's interesting. There's two different types of caravanners here. I thought you had your own areas. Also, love the adverts on the asteroids. <laughs> Removing the former organic city, which will give us more mining districts, and most importantly, plus 10% to our society research speed. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, this seems to go pretty much everywhere in both directions. Um, so right now there and somewhere over here. Over here seems really good, though. Easier and easier to block off. We can at least grab all this. Okay, we found one of the Fallen Empires. Target identified as non-organic. Standing down. Well, if there's no Empire here, we're pretty blocked off thanks to the Fallen Empire. No one will expand past them. Just need to make sure this is blocked off, then this entire section can be ours. How much influence is that going to cost us? Lots. Might be worth grabbing, though, as soon as possible still. Just save up our influence. Thanks to the impossible ceramics event, we do have enough inf Well, we are getting close to having enough influence to grab this system. The problem is, I do have to stop grabbing all the other systems, and I kind of want everything. But it is probably better to just grab the important stuff for now. Like that, the Gaia world, and a few planets over here. I will accept all the influence. 
Expansion is finished, and I am tempted by two different choices, the first of which is a pretty standard one, Technological Ascendancy. Here's some more research speed, have fun you crazy robot kids you! Or we could go with Interstellar Dominion, because this means we can grab everything very, very, very cheaply. Though honestly, even um, Executive Vigor is fantastic as well. Basically, there's a lot of choices. Eventually, we will definitely grab Mastery of Nature because I want to go down the route of Machine Worlds. Machine Worlds are just fantastic. Plus 10% resource output for all of your robots on the planet, minus 10% housing usage, and you can have any number of districts on the planet as mining or generator districts because that ability removes all of the regular features. So all of those districts can be mining or energy or whatever you want. We can have a very, very strong economy, which we're going to need. And then this really heavily combos with Mastery of Nature, because then your planets have two more districts. Really, really powerful planets. For now though, I think I'm just going to grab Technological Ascendancy. Interstellar Dominion is fantastic, but let's just increase our research speed. We're not doing terribly for research, because honestly, I'm building lots of research stations on the main planet. We're going to get loads of minerals anyway, so we can afford to do this. Try and get our research up. Geothermal, giving us energy, and a lovely asteroid, so kindly giving us minerals. I've just realised how weird this, the um, science stations look. This is going to take a while. Oh yeah, we're watching the whole thing. I am wasting this minute into the two hour video. Because editing is not difficult enough. Action finalized. Wow, the Gaia world even has a rare feature, which will allow us to have loads more um, generator jobs. Glorious energy for the collective. Where did you come from? Oh, I missed that. Well, I'm done. Yeah, I missed this one little connection point here. Because of the angle, it didn't look like there was a connection point. So most likely, there's a group over here. So there and there, so we need to block off this as soon as possible. Let's investigate, even though it's going to cost a bit. Um, go back on yourself. Can one of you scientists please just right now survey that? You sit there. We're going to make a bastion there as well. Bless. Yep, they're over here. Hello. Oh, poop. They are right up to there right now. And they're going to be aggressive. Oh, that is really bad. I can't believe I didn't see that. I was doing everything else correctly, just... My eyes have failed me! Okay, yeah, we need to build some more ships. Um, all alloys now for ship construction and to buff up this bastion. We need to make sure that this holds so that we can continue to expand into all of this lovely, lovely, lovely space. We found the ruined ring world. Lovely. That's obviously something we're going to go towards the then near the end. Detected. Okay, so we've grabbed the system in time going to build a bastion right now and then we're going to focus on building some more ships uh, at least one of our new colonies is going to be alloy production anyway that was the main goal to begin with just we need to speed this up a bit okay sacrificing some of our tech for far more alloy productions because well that's exactly what we need also alloy production not productions i can't do damn their words also just spent all of our minerals to um, transfer into alloys so now i can't build more alloy foundries that was smart. I am a smart person. Eat. So, they've now changed to hostile. That just happened now, so that's actually pretty quick. And thankfully, we are now only inferior with our fleet power, not pathetic. So I think that's holding them off. Plus, the Bastion is now up and running. It's not the strongest Bastion ever, but if we put our fleet next to it, it should destroy them if they decide to try and sack us. And they have become our main target. Oh no. So, this planet is suffering through tremors, which means this planet is an egg. Yep. There's a chance that it'll hatch into a Leviathan, who will be very, very, very dangerous. Do I still want to colonize this? Kind of, yes. It's still a 20 sized planet, and sometimes it doesn't hatch. I can't remember how these events actually happen. 
Maybe I'll wait for a while, folks on the other planets. Yep, so that just happened again. It's definitely going to hatch. Move away. You know what? Just move away right now. Definitely my favourite model in the game, but yet that is way too deadly for us to deal with. That will turn hostile very, very soon and simply destroy the station, but I think it stays in this system. System resources analysed. We'll build a brighter future. It's been quite a peaceful beginning, honestly, considering they're meant to be more aggressive and, well, we are the driven exterminators. The power of a bastion, I suppose. Ooh, shinier lasers. Yes, please. Now creating our special power plant, which not only gives us four tech drone jobs, it also produces ten energy all by itself. So proud of you. There we are. After that, we'll then build the energy grid, which I believe may have been changed in the recent beta patch. May have been changed earlier than that. But either way, it now also gives more maximum districts, and it also costs alloys. So that, then that, this will be a lot of energy. Our neighbours have now declared war on us. And our ships are nowhere near where they should be because they were just being upgraded. Please move your butts over there. We now have some destroyers at least, so... We have those. Which is good. It's quite a strong bastion, so that should take a lot of beating. So hopefully we can just hold them off, hold them off, continue to hold them off, then hold them off. And then eventually they'll fall asleep and give up. Discourse seeding in progress. We are, however, hemorrhaging energy right now, which System is not something analyzed. I particularly like. Okay, capacity overload is online. We now have two points to spend on our lovely robots. And what I think is going to happen now is we're going to shrink our robots down, make them more streamlined, and thus they are now mass-produced. That makes sense, right? That's a bit oversized, it's more for the looks and everything, it's even seemingly wearing something. This is more just the base model. It's more energy efficient, it's easier to make, and yeah, we'll just go with that. They're going to cost us less energy, and we're going to have more of them faster. System resources analyzed. Speaking of which, let's make a new machine assembly plant. And continue. Going to send my ships in against this system there. Let's see if we can grab that system. That'll force them to attack here, most likely. And that should all be finalized. good. Where am I expanding to next? Don't really know. As long as we have all these planets, it doesn't really matter too much. We could go through here and grab all of this. But then we'll have yet another border with another empire. No! Don't get away! Darn it. For some reason, they had a small fleet here. That would have been fantastic if we could have dealt with those. Complete. Still, that's our station now. Thank you. Special inquiry concluded. Sit log updated. System resource. Oh no! Well, we found their main fleet. You know, I probably should retreat, but here's the thing. If I can damage them enough, then this bastion will be strong enough to hold them off. In fact, it already is. Sorry, lads. For the good of the harvesters, you are losing your lives here. Just take out as many as you can. Focus on the corvettes to have less health. But they do dodge more. Focus on whatever you can actually hit. So many lasers. Okay, yep, they are definitely not getting through this station now. And just to make sure, as soon as we can, we'll make a defense platform. 
We have found the home system of the precursors right over here. So our science vessel is on the way. As soon as we find this system, it'll give us loads of unity and loads of science, which is very, very welcome indeed. Our fleet is moving off. That's great. I think we might be able to actually grab a couple of their systems by the end of this. Since they're definitely not going into our territory, if we can get to the stage where I can force status quo, what I can do is quickly attack a few of their systems, then force status quo. That way they don't have a chance to really do anything. If we're really lucky, we could even go after one of these planets. Ooh, this is a very good planet indeed. Okay, lads, we've got a target. Style reactionaries detected. It's all sort of just repeating itself like last time. We destroy one of their fleets, the rest of their fleets attack us. They will most likely destroy our fleet. And then we stalemate again. Complete. Actually, no. We have a good chance here. We will be harvesting you. Maybe. Come on, you robots. Yes, lovely. That's perfect. Let's grab some of that research then. And you can grab you and you. And we can force status quo whenever we wish to. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Lovely. We now have an additional civic slot. So let's grab that as soon as possible. So what do we want now then? Honestly, I'm tempted by this. Factory overclocking will mean our leaders become way more powerful, way faster. Although I could also increase our assembly speed by a further 20%. That would bring all of our planets online a lot faster. In fact, 20% faster. Yeah, that's probably the best. Okay, let's make our robots even more streamlined. Grabbing this system, then we're going to grab this system back. Oh no, they didn't take it, okay. I don't think we're grabbing the planet. No, we're definitely not. So we can keep on fighting these for a bit longer, but honestly, at this point, I'm happy enough with what we've got. We've got four additional systems. We've weakened them. The next time, it'll be us attacking them, not the other way around, and then we'll start devouring their people. So, status quo. Reactionaries detected. We will accept this for now. Thank you very much. Now, science vessel, you can finally get all that lovely research off them. That'll be great. And you can go home because you need to upgrade very, very soon. And so, prosperity is finished. And with that, we get more coordinators. With every 20 population, we get one coordinator job for free. So, more unity, more menial jobs being boosted... <laughs> Look, I played things concisely. Prosperity is finished, meaning now we get more coordinators, which means more unity, more science, and more menial job production increases. So, if we go over here, we could get Synthetic Age. And I'm very tempted by that. It's not the best, but I do like it. Then after that, we should hopefully get the tech soon for Machine Worlds. Sure. Let's make our robots even more streamlined. They're gonna be perfect. I mean, we, we could just do this. Or we could leave that, and then we could grab... Ooh, bonus research. That's pretty darn lovely, it must be said. Or our leaders could level up faster. Or even less upkeep. Nope, I think bonus science. We're scientists now. Sith log updated. So I asked my fiancé to be quiet for like a few seconds while I recorded, and if you can hear the very slight noises in the background... Oh! Weird! It stopped some for some reason! You carry on, love! Oh look! A primitive civilization! I'm sure they're going to be ready for this. Primitive civilization? Harvester robots. Harvester robots. Primitive civilization. Workforce Liberation. That is how the voice described this attack. Yep. <laughs> liberation Planet from Planet your Planet lives. Liberated. There we are. You're undesirables, and you are slowly being devoured into the collective. Okay, so let's actually uh, send over one of the robots so we don't lose this world. Thank you very much. Destroy this, because why not? And there's no point in building because these fellows will be gone soon and then I'll lose the building sections anyway. Lovely. And I'm currently about to colonize this. Fantastic. Okay, you can go back over here where we're still getting ready for the next attack. Our fleet is significantly stronger than it was, but it still needs to be beefed up a little. Good news. So it turns out over here in the lovely, lovely planet we've just taken away from our forefathers. 
we can indeed get foundry arcologies, which will produce alloys. Lots of them, in fact. So this will eventually be the ultimate factory. But for now, we're just going to build houses, honestly. People are going to live there. It's going to be lovely, especially in the summer. And we are under attack again. Really, fellas? Okay, once our ships are upgraded, we'll send them on their way. Uh, let's grab that as well. Lovely. Come on, upgrade faster. We need to destroy things. That's literally our only job. They just had almost enough force power to destroy our fleet, then they split up. This is why you need the logic of the machine. You will be harvested and used to further our goals, which, let's face it, are the logical goals. We're going to take all of that again. This time, hopefully, we'll take your planet as well. They're trying to take their planet back. I think they might succeed. Okay. Oh, no, never mind. We get there, they run away. Just how it should be. Well, isn't this glorious? One system at a time, their empire is being devoured. Now, let's have a quick look-see. Just how strong are they now? There you are. And pathetic fleet power. I think we have destroyed all of their fleets, and now we are on a rampage. Enemy station engaged. Also, there's two more planets here, which I'm definitely going to grab, but that won't make any difference for us. That, admittedly, is a bit annoying, but it's fine. And that's just a pretty good world. Good. Good. Construction finalized. We've got a weird looking empire right now. So a single foundry arcology is going to be draining 80 minerals. And giving us 40 alloys, to be fair. Well, we don't need the industrial, so... Yeah, I'd rather these people have jobs, so let's go ahead. Just need to note that I'm going to be very mineral-starved um, for a while. Well, at least now we can start making battle frames rather than just hunter-killers, because hunter-killers are just not all that great. Here's the problem, though. I don't really have many things to sell to get minerals at the moment. Yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult for the uh, foreseeable future, honestly. Same strength, doesn't matter, go ahead. The world is mine, and they are now being chemically processed. So with that, there isn't really all that much left to do. Just take the last few planets they- Oh, we only have one more planet! Well, then we'll take the system, but don't take the planet. You just move over here so you don't accidentally go hostile and take over everything. The Mega Warform. Okay, now that is what I was looking for. The ultimate soldier. The drums of war. Okay, so it seems like these fellows over there have just became a brand new Carnot. Okay, well, on the upside, we do have these fellows defending us, and I don't think these can go through the Fallen Empire, but I might be wrong there. A new threat is born. Either way, uh, we need to start making some more fleets, and thankfully we certainly have the resources to do so. Oh, please don't be able to go through there. Yeah, focus on those fellows instead. That'd be much more fun. Ooh, we have finished this. Lovely. Which means plus 5% stability on all planets, so bonus resources for us. And now, machine worlds. Glorious. Every last bit of organic life harvested from every single planet. There shall be only resource and the cold, hard logic of the machines. Basically, you're all doomed. Ah, that does take 10,000 energy on the other hand. Well, on the upside, we are making lots of energy. It's the one thing we are really, really rich in, so... I'll just wait, and, well, I'm going to start spending all of my energy on just upgrading every single planet we have. That's the end goal. Everything metal. To get complete... Beautiful. Homeworld, prepare to be 
beautified. Now, we can also speed this up with terraforming gases. That's plus 50%, which is fantastic. Well, we were forced into peace, and then straight after that, they got vassalized by their neighbors. <laughs> well, that happened. So, uh, what next then? Okay, you're currently building a colony ship, so you can be destroyed. Thank you. We could just go straight after these fellows. I mean, ooh, they do have pretty nice um, fleets, though. We will need to bring in our secondary fleet, which is currently being upgraded. Oh, wow. That is actually way stronger than I thought it was. We do have our first battleships as well now. Currently just using lasers, though. Our tech is a bit weird. It's really developed in some ways, but then really behind in others. But yeah, combined, that should be able to crush the collective here. So you could easily grab all of these systems as well, all these planets. Not too sure. We could just wait, though, honestly, at this point. Don't really want to increase my empire sprawl that fast by grabbing all these more... Well, all these systems in addition to all the systems we just grabbed. God, we look so weird at the moment. The planet will eventually make us very, very powerful, but for now, I think it's time we just rest. Okay, so versatility, annoyingly, does have form federation here, which we are never going to use, but that market fee reduction is beautiful. Also, the minus upkeep is beautiful. Also, having the housing usage reduced is also rather beautiful. Even the population assembly cost reduction is rather nice. Now, with domination, we get influence, and our menial drones become even more effective. And influence is great. The ruler level cap increase as well, and governor level cap is good, because a lot of our governors have now hit their cap. But supremacy? Well, here's some bonus fire rate. Do you like fire rate? Here's some fire rate. And orbital bombardment damage. Why do you need to invade a planet when you can just scorch the very earth? Well, I just sold myself. I have been waiting for this tech to pop up from the very start, and only now have I finally got it. There we go. Production targets as an edict, and then mineral purification plants as a building. Finally, we can increase our mineral uh, production on every single planet. Well, it's every planet we're getting minerals, but you get the point. I even got executive vigor because I knew I'd have capacity overload and that on permanently. But no, it just didn't give me the option. Okay, so that's four planets now becoming machine worlds. Almost all of my resources are now going towards just machining everything. Hyper shields, lovely, I'll grab that. Don't really care about any of these, honestly, since the machine world um, removes all tile blockers. So let's go for the cheapest. And, oh yes, better thrusters, lovely. Lovely. Okay, so this is going to be one of our main science worlds, if not the main science world. Size 24, and we have the Sea of Consciousness, giving plus 10 to all of our researchers. I believe we still keep the Sea of Consciousness even after we get Machine World, and honestly, even if we don't keep it, I would still do this, because right now, that's the focus. The end goal is to have all of our worlds coated in metal. In the layers. Well, it's happened. The very first machine world has now been created. Lovely. Now, we really need to create some of these purely for minerals and energy. There are several planets which are also quite large, which I haven't really begun to build on, so I'm not going to have to destroy any science buildings or anything like that. So, yeah, really focusing now on minerals and energy, and that should keep everything running smoothly. We could start invading our neighbours as well. We have our fleet ready. Uh, you're the highest level. There we are. But do we really want to at the moment? Yes. We always do. And here's one more of the war forms. Let's move you out. In fact, two of the war forms. Lovely. This is really going to hurt our empire sprawl. There's the thing. I kind of want to start to get our admin cap higher before invading more. But that's just so silly. The amount of resources we can gain here is just phenomenal. Yeah, let's go to war. That is kind of our purpose, really, isn't it? So let's go and do the thing we were built for. Well, weren't built for, but are currently doing anyway. Hello. I want to eat you. We have declared war. We have a galaxy to win. 
This shouldn't be so difficult. There's our cruisers, there's our battleships. Lovely. Was that one called the Sober? Yeah, it is. <laughs> we are not killing them anywhere near as fast as I would expect. I think we really need to focus on some anti-shield stuff. Yeah, that's way too long. That was an awful fight. Considering how much stronger we were, anyway. Hmm. Still, though, we win. And that was all their forces decimated, so... We'll just roll on in and take everything off them. Ooh. A thing. I like things. I'll take it. So I'm starting to think that the mid-game crisis is actually kind of terrifying when you start it earlier. Yeah, look at that. They have all of that space now, and they've just conquered one of my fringe worlds which is right here. I'm gonna let them keep it because I ain't fighting this. No, just no. Honestly, we could build a fleet which could easily fight them or at least get on their level, but it would take a lot of resources and I'm still trying to funnel all of my money for the long term. I want my world to be utterly amazing before the end game crisis and I can't afford to do all of this because all of my alloys at the moment are being turned into energy to create machine worlds and I can't really use up any more minerals for anything so right now I just can't afford to fight them oh this poor world though I believe our population since they are regular robot empire machines will be destroyed over time construction finalized yeah, but it really does seem like, thankfully, they can't get through here. This is saving us. But again, we probably could fight them. But this means I don't have to. Because they're not getting past the Fallen Empire. And honestly, if they do attack the Fallen Empire, that'll be fantastic. Because that's weakening the Fallen Empire for later. Since Fallen Empires don't reinforce their fleets. So once they've lost their force, they've lost their force. The Great Khan has perished. But not before doing some fantastic work. Hats off to the Great Khan. Not like air. I'm just busy making worlds out of metal. Which honestly sounds cooler. Admin capacity is now being increased. We're actually completely on repeatables now. There are some bits of tech I'm still after, like gateway travel. But yeah, for the most part, repeat, repeat, repeat. That looks so weird now. Say he's the one with empire borders like this. Just look at that. That is horrendous. And I kind of love it. Our forces report that they have concluded the orbital bombardment of the planet. All population centers have been systematically eradicated. And the irradiated planet now only supports minimal life. <laughs> finalized. Lovely. Tomb worlds for all. Construction. Just look at that. Terraforming 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 planets all at once. Complete. Construction finalized. I mean, we really should just invade these planets because, you know, destroying the populations gives us unity and stuff, but eh. This is easier. So I've kind of hit this point now where to keep our minerals going, I'm having to spend a lot of energy on it, and so we're not terraforming any more worlds. I managed to get loads of them to begin with, but now as these worlds progress, they're using up more and more minerals, and that's happening faster than I'm making new mining worlds. So really need to focus on production here. Although our tech is now at 8k, which is lovely, I am focusing on the admin cap increase, which is happening quite quickly, honestly. Why am I trying to become a tall empire at this point? I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Is that really a surprise to anyone? In the background, I've been very slowly destroying the hive mind, and now we're attacking their last planet. I would have grabbed all these systems as well, but honestly, 
I just want to focus on what we already have right now. I am now using the Mastery of Nature ability on most of my worlds, at least the worlds which are sort of finished off, and that should help out a lot. More districts equals more jobs, and more housing, which means more of everything. Still focusing on the admin cap as much as possible, and at the moment, it's not catching up with how much we're taking over. At all. But it's still helping. Okay, begin by- Ooh, no, I'm not gonna bombard this. This could give me so much energy. You! There. Now. Or at least enter orbit. No, you can conquer it straight away, so you can just stay there. You fellas, get there and take it over. 800. And 45 energy per month from this world, whilst I devour its inhabitants. Giving us unity and energy. See? All life is resource. Well, the ruined arcology has got a lot cheaper. Minus 33%, minus 33%, and minus 25%, they're now only at 85 energy and 85 minerals. So that's pretty nice. That is pretty nice indeed. We're also getting so much energy now, it's kind of ridiculous. So, basically all planets are now being converted into machine worlds. But, we are still building districts faster than we are researching the admin cap, which means we're still slowing down with tech. That will eventually change once all the worlds are finished off, once we have all of the districts built. But that's going to be a while. I don't think I'm doing this right- no, I know I'm not doing this right, but I kind of want to see if this transition is okay once you've gone this wide with your playstyle. I mean, it's not- not really that far into the game, it's going to be 2400 before the endgame events can really occur, and I'm not too scared of the Fallen Empires because, well, we've got only one close to us which can't awaken unless one of the specific endgame events causes it to happen, so we're pretty safe. I just want to see if this is okay to do. I don't think it is. I think I'm doing it stupidly, but I'm having a lot of fun, even though it's just micromanaging worlds. Pretty boring, though. I imagine so far I've got very little footage over the last 20, 30 years in game. Science vessels for all the planets! Lovely. That's gonna cost a fortune in leaders, but on the upside, lots of bonus research to all the planets they're going to. We have so many tech worlds, it's a real waste not having assistance for their research. Plus 10% to begin with, and then as they level up, well, more and more bonus. If we look at our home world at the moment, that's getting a plus 22%. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So I've went ahead and I've grabbed Voidborn and Master Builders. Now, Voidborn, I don't really know how good this is with the Machine Empire. Master Builders, on the other hand, is utterly amazing. So I've grabbed that, which is fantastic. And now we can start work on this ring world, at least as soon as we have Mega Engineering, which I'm now researching. And there's some living metal nearby, so once you've done that, do a second jump and grab that. Beginning reconstruction of the ring world. Construction complete. Lovely. And you, hurry up and grab that. Thank you very much. Cons Our fleet is getting much stronger now because... There we are. Finally using some of the higher tech stuff, although not really happy with how it's completely laid out. At least we have better stuff equipped. So what I really want them is the Fallen Empire stuff, like always. But really... I need to start attacking the, the Leviathans and getting the special tech spawns. Beautiful! So what can we use these for then? So generator districts, food, or nexus districts, okay. Probably going to focus on science and then just keep on adding generator districts and nexus districts at the end. Seems reasonable to me. Also, I'm getting very tired now, as you can probably tell, because my speech is getting worse and worse by the minute. Now, that was lovely. Material analysis. Upkeep of all jobs is reduced by 5%. We are now on 18k research, and it is growing rapidly. And we are getting loads upon loads of just everything, honestly. We're doing pretty well for ourselves. And if this continues, our science is going to be at truly ridiculous levels before the endgame crisis occurs. And our fleet's getting stronger and stronger as well. Honestly, haven't really added too many ships, now 82k. 
loads of bonuses to their damage and armor and such, so by the time the endgame crisis does occur in 2400, I am very confident we're going to be ready. In fact, let's see if we can kill this thing. Okay, here we are. Let's see how this goes. How did you miss this thing? It's bigger than a planet. You missed a planet. Is it shooting living things at us? Or are they essentially missiles? Whoa, either way, that is a, an insane amount of damage. So we can research the shards, or no, we are done. Obviously, we're going to research the shards. Okay. Situation log updated. Uh, the nearest scientist, please get here and research the projects. You can now return home, kind of limp home, honestly, because that is badly damaged. And then we kind of want to go against some of the other leviathans. Sadly, the scrap bot isn't near us because that gives a really nice um, hull regen item. Oh, no, it is. Of course it is. Yeah, it was earlier. The scavenger bot is it? Well, that's obviously our next target then. Tech research option gained. A gargantuan evolution. So what does that give you? Plus 5% energy from jobs. Yes, please. Lovely. Okay then, so let's get that started as well. Then let's find one of our construction vessels who have been doing very little for quite some time. Hello, random planet. Uh, let's go with you so I can build it nice and close to our capital. Where do I want to build it? Hmm. Doesn't really matter too much. You know what, let's build it here. Let's build a star base and then we'll build the science nexus here so we also have the extra science. I just think that'll look pretty darn cool. Okay, now, although I do really want to build the science nexus as soon as possible, scientific revolution is amazing. So we will be going with that first of all. And hello to the dimensional horror. That thing has an insane range. I'm now very glad we're ignoring a lot of its shields because of our battleships. Though we do need more. What I would really like is Cloud Lightning. Though we need the um, one type of enemy alien to actually get that research. Lovely. Let's return you. Goodbye. Then let's get that scientist over there to research that. The Science Nexus has been built, and we're now very close to building the very first stage of its regular construction, which is being helped by this lovely thing. So, yep, that's plus 50% as well, so it is quickly being built, or at least quickly in comparison to usual, so it's okay. We'll eventually get some bonus science. And can you grab that, please? Thank you very much. We found a Void Cloud. Now, the reason why I wanted that is because that will give me Cloud Lightning. And what Cloud Lightning is, is a lovely large weapon which ignores armor and shields. Very, very similar to this here, the focused arc emitter. It's just far weaker. But if we have enough of them, that will mean we will hard counter a lot of the endgame crisis. And we are also very, very powerful versus the Fallen Empires, which is good. Because I want this. Like now. So here is the Cloud Lightning. Average damage is very, very low. But remember, it completely ignores all shields and all armor. And it actually has really good tracking. Wow. Well, good tracking for a large vehicle anyway. 
30% tracking, 100% accuracy, versus the weapons we're currently using, 75% accuracy and 0% tracking, but it is much shorter range. But still, I want to see how effective this is, honestly. Plus, it's just going to look really cool. Now at 30k science, and as you can see here with the admin cap, we are very quickly getting the admin cap in comparison to earlier. And in fact, yep, our technology cost is now only 82% increased. Earlier on, it was over 150. And we still have almost 40 years left. Not bad, not bad at all. Look at all those battleships. It's so beautiful. Science Nexus now completely online. Fantastic. And if I go to tech, I should see... There we are, Science Nexus plus 15%. Construction that is finalized. just so, so glorious. Now, we're about to start fixing up these ring worlds, so really, I don't want to start a new construction. Or do I? What else do we have to fix? There was something over here, wasn't there? Was there something else? We could try to build one of the buildings which I haven't built before. So I guess that's probably our next goal? Sure, then we'll do the ring worlds after that. That seems reasonable to me. So this is the one which we found earlier. Uh, sure, let's save up for this and as soon as we can, we'll build it. Never seen this active, so I would like to see what the coordination center actually does. Military comm station. Okay. I'm hoping it's just all of your ships get a plus 10% fire rate. Yay! Okay, well, our ships are now finally on the move. It's time to test out these versus the Fallen Empire. Each group has a Titan as well, which is lovely. And I'm about to activate all of these as well. So the most important one is the focusing crystals, which is already active. Then just shield boost, I suppose, and explosives. Cool. I guess the armor would be good as well, since we are still using a bit of armor. So let's go ahead and use that as well. So it turns out, because the Fallen Empire is indeed a machine empire, I actually need to make claims. That's really weird at this point. Well, either way. We have declared war. We have a galaxy to win. And our ground forces are looking fantastic, made almost completely of the mega war forms. Construction. Oh, here they come. So that's pretty quick. <laughs> and the station is ours. To be fair, that was quite a weak station, but still. Are they moving to attack us? They really should. Lovely. Oh, well, it begins. I just saw a few shots straight away. Look at all that lovely lightning. Well, actually, that's just the main spinal weapon, but still. It's weird not seeing the shields or armor move at all. Oh, there's the lightning. Now they're in range of that. Oh, that was just so beautiful. Did we lose a single ship? That was such a hard counter. No, we lost nothing. That was so brutal. Finalized. Sadly, it turns out I was looking at the wrong report there. But still, we only lost a few corvettes and a few destroyers. I love how as soon as they get in range of the cloud lightning, suddenly this whole other barrage is just unleashed. Construction complete. 
Oh no, people are upset at us. I am upset by this. I forgot how much resource we're getting from this. Huh, the ancient crypto chamber. Whoa, 50 out of 50 Nexus districts. I mean, that isn't that good. Wow, as soon as we get this, our empire sprawl will increase by 50. Actually, more than 50. It's 50 just for the districts. Ugh, don't really want that at all. So, I guess I'll just demolish all the districts. And destroy all the um, crypto chambers. That's more like it. 900 energy over there. And this one's producing a few alloys and a bit of mineral. I mean, yeah, it's okay. It's more the tech rafter. I did not realize that, honestly, at this stage, it's not that great grabbing these worlds. I'll have to redevelop them so, so heavily. So the question is, do I even want to destroy this and grab it? I mean, it is a ring world. It's a ring world, and there's a large pop uh, population of machines here, so it won't take too long to re-establish these worlds as something useful, like science. But yeah, I think it's going to hurt me for a while. So, yeah. That's a bit weird. Striking at the lair of the oppressor. Okay, you're already destroying that. Yep, you can take on everything here easily, so in that case... Let's grab the rest of the things. The best possible outcome. Which means the end of the Fallen Empire. Oh, that Empire Sprawl. So. The Alpha Complex is terrible. It really is. I mean, it could give me loads of energy over time, but yeah, that's just insane. And obviously these need to be destroyed because they're costing me energy. I'm sorry, but the frozen remains of long-deceased aliens will be used as a resource, I'm sure. We're simply recycling. Wish there was an easier way to demolish. It's going to be even worse when it comes to the uh, districts. But yeah, we need to remove these. They're just costing me energy, actually, still. Obviously, we don't care about food. Wait, 20 energy for 100 food? Huh, I mean, yeah, with the bioreactors, we could get energy from that, but I don't really want that too much. Fine, fine. Let's max that out first. Then we'll sort this sorry excuse for a ring world out. I am less dumb than I thought. It's because of the planetary devastation. That's why that went down so much. I was thinking the numbers seemed a bit off there, but yeah, it's actually fine. Then all these jobs will be replaced with the science jobs, and we have just about enough amenities, and we can increase the Nexus districts as they are needed to um, deal with that. Okay, okay, okay. The sleepers awake. Okay. Where are you? There they are. Well. I'm honestly not too scared of you, but good luck conquering the galaxy. Have fun. I'll be over here. Okay, the coordination center has been rebuilt. Let's take a quick look at this thing. Okay, that looks pretty cool. But what exactly do you do then? Am I going to have a bonus anywhere so I can see what you're doing? Nope, I'm going to have to figure it out myself, aren't I? So, after looking at some numbers, it seems like the Coordination Center gives us plus 6 to our Starbase capacity, plus 150 to our Naval capacity, and it seems to be giving us a plus 15% bonus to our sublight speed on all of our craft, because if I go over here... That's giving us plus 20%, just our leader, and then I can't account for that extra 15%. Now, I could be wrong with that, but that seems to be the case, at least from face value. 
There must be an easier way to see exactly what it's doing, but I can't figure it out right now. If you know the easier way, then please tell me in the comments. It must have a description somewhere. This is doing this. Would like to know. Would like to know. There we are. We now have the dark matter deflectors and... There we are. The reactors have also been improved. Lovely. Look at that. Better thrusters, better reactors, and better shields. Thank you very much to the ancient caretakers. Over at the Fallen Empire's ring world, we have now repaired the last habitable section. Although apparently we have also kind of broke it a little bit there. They normally have this gap. And weird overlapping sections that are sort of flickering. Yeah, I'm sure that was intentional. I just recorded almost 20 minutes worth of footage without the microphone on. So, what did I just talk about? Well, honestly, I wasn't talking about all that much important, just that now our ships are looking really good, and we are going to go to war with the Awakened Empire. Of course, the problem is I can't actually get to the Awakened Empire, so what we're going to need to do is go to war with these fellows, then go through their territory, destroying everything on our way, get to here, then go to war. Essentially, I'm going to split this empire into two. It's gonna look a bit weird to say the least. So, can you please all move out? That would be fantastic. Look at all those battleships. I've gone a bit overboard with the battleships, I will admit. But I'm okay with that. So it turns out they have no allies, and so this is going to be even easier than I originally thought. Just gonna go straight through, straight to there, and then grab the Fallen Empire. Scientific progress attained. Rather than invading these planets and losing some of our ground forces, I'm just going to absolutely bombard them. We can harvest them later. Construction complete. Never mind, it's taking too long, and honestly, we do have 8,000 worth of ground forces right now, so that's fine. They are stronger than I expected, but as long as they still have low hull but high shields, then we still counter them. This is gonna be a lovely fight. Also going to quickly demolish some of these. And that should help out our Empire Sprawl. Yep, it's now down to 958. Lovely. Do that to the other planets as well, because, well, it's going to be a while until they're fully populated with robots to even use the districts. So, it seems like their forces are going to this wormhole. I don't know where that wormhole honestly goes, but they're attacking the station over here. So I can only assume it's this wormhole here. The thing is, by the time they get there, we are going to have taken everything we could possibly want. The Awakened Empires and the Fallen Empires have a really weird habit of doing this. They like to try and attack you and not defend for the first, maybe, year of a fight. Then they will realise what's going on and rush back to defend, but at that point they're so far away. They're pretty much done for. And occasionally they even jump back into the fight because of how far away they are, and then that weakens them and then you just destroy them. At least I've seen that happen at least once. Yep, there we go. They just jumped back into this area. That means right now, they should be weakened. Yep, sublight speed minus 50%. If we go to damage... Uh, actually, what other things are affected by jumping? They definitely jumped, though, since they were there. Then they're there. And as you can see, I still have all these stations in between. Your ship's weapon damage is minus 50% and sublight speed is minus 50%. Well, it's not showing the damage minus... I'm certain they jumped, though. And that 50% there is very telling. Ship's weapon damage minus 5%, so maybe it's... 
being countered by something else. Either way, they're weaker than they should be right now, and it won't take much for us to invade them again. Um, right now, though, all of our ground forces are currently attacking here, so I need to get back here before that's over. Well, that was a bit of a dumb, dumb moment for me. It's this wormhole. Yeah, we're going to lose some systems, but the thing is, we're now taking their second main planet, and we're taking over everything else. They're going to be destroyed, and then we'll just reclaim all the areas we lost. It'll only take a few moments. Scientific progress attained. We found a shielded world. That's interesting. And that's it, we have now taken full control of their lands, and of course, every single one of their planets is being converted into the most beautiful of worlds, the machine world. And we're also getting a lot of energy from all of this. Lovely. So we have a whole host of new planets, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm sending my fleets back because I still haven't done the whole Elgate thing. So that's the, ne the next goal before the endgame crisis. We have lowered the energy barrier that surrounded the world. What our scientists found was an indistinct habitable world devoid of civilization, with one notable exception. A small isolated hut was found perched on a mesa in the planet's northern hemisphere. Okay. Hello there. So, he's an admiral that was around hundreds of centuries ago. How are you still alive? Okay, so time is passing more slowly inside of the barrier. Only 40 years in our time, okay. Why? When peace finally arrived, we sought treaties with those we had defeated. My presence became an embarrassment. Oh, war crimes. Well... Um, I'm going to let you into our empire anyway. So just how good is this new leader of ours? First of all, level 10. Just a general good leader. Okay. In the background, I've also been fixing up the second ring world over here in the Gamma Refuge, and now we have two of the sections fully online. Just two more to go. And of course, over in Alpha, we are completely online. 
Well, whilst we're waiting for this fleet to eventually catch up, you guys go over there. What happens if you destroy this lovely thing, the caravan station? Which looks amazing, by the way. Sorry, I was literally just taking a moment there to appreciate the artwork in Erm Stellaris, because that just looks so cool. And again, I love the asteroid adverts, but I'm afraid... I just want to shoot at it, you know? Sometimes a pretty thing should be shot at. That is not a quote. You should not quote that anywhere. Enemy station engaged. Our research has progressed. Excellent. Oh, so we get some resources. Oh, it's slowly falling down, I think? It's a bit hard to tell. That was a pretty cool death scene. Okay, um, everyone. Back to where you are. You! More explosive damage. Oh, it gets re-established elsewhere. Huh. Cool. Special inquiry concluded. Oh dear, the Grey Tempest. <laughs> well, we just caused the uh, galaxy a few problems. <laughs> Unfortunately, the incoming surge was diverted to the other Elgates in the galaxy. Strange vessels consisting of nanites are pouring through the now fully active gates, attacking everything on sight. <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be as funny as it is, but it is hilarious. So, yeah, essentially... This is the most, I think, the most aggressive version of all the different Elgate events. This is when the Nanites are still in their aggressive mode, where they've only just taken over their former creators. Well, still their creators, but you get the idea. The creators, and yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. Okay, lads. Um, let's uh, get over here anyway, shall we? Hostile reactionaries engaged. Hello there. Wow, you have loads of hull. Yep, our stuff is not going to be great here. Yeah, our weapons are good versus enemies which are focused on armor and shields over hull. Um, our stuff does just average damage to hull. It just goes straight through everything else. But we are way strong enough to deal with this. And then we can grab these planets, which is nice. Yeah, that didn't stand a chance. Of course, the important thing is once we have this system and we completely take it over, we can teleport to any of the other L gates on the map very easily and no one else can jump to us. We just need to make sure to have a good um, station here, a good bastion. It's like free um, gateways. But first, we need some science vessels. Oh, you survived! Good. Go and explore. Okay, this is their home system. There is the factory. If we kill this, I believe they all turn off. So, let's go and, well, destroy things.
Construction complete. Lovely. So, now we can terraform the nanite worlds. Which, of course, will all now become machine worlds. Beautiful. We can harvest something completely new. Well, that's annoying. So first we need to turn this into a regular world, then we can turn it into a machine world. Well, let's get to work. I'll do this, then I will... Colonize them, then I will turn them into glorious, glorious machines. The machine cluster. Nanites. Or converting this world into a new world. It is a 22 size planet, but the thing is, once we have enough nanites, and this is going to take a long time, but still, 580 of them. That will allow us to have plus 10% extra research speed. On top of everything else, that would be lovely. I mean, just look at this. The level of our research is just insane. The repeatables have been done so many times, and our battleships are just so brutal with their cloud lightnings at the moment. Speaking of which... Yeah, these are our fleets at the moment. I really love battleships. Honestly, this is so stupid. I shouldn't be building this many battleships, but I want to see if with overwhelming force and the glory of lightning, <laughs> is it viable to just go battleships. Now, each of these titans is actually bringing the bonus tracking, or is it bonus chance to hit? One of the two. Which one is it? It is the tracking. The idea is... Large weapons have terrible tracking, meaning that very fast opponents with high evasion are difficult to hit. But Cloud Lightning is surprisingly okay with its tracking. It's not the best, but it's pretty good and then has very high accuracy. Combine this with the bonus tracking of the main um, Titan, and maybe that's going to be okay. The Titans also, are, sorry, the battleships are also using double bonus tracking um, extra items here. So hopefully that's okay, maybe. Perhaps? We'll see. I mean, so far they've been fantastic. We've only really been fighting against weaker enemies. When it comes to the actual endgame crisis, and we have 300k plus fleets, then we're going to see if it's actually working. If not, then we start mixing in corvettes. We're still going to use the anti-hull um, stuff, the stuff which ignores shield and armor, I should say. And the corvettes do have missiles and, and disruptors, so at least they still ignore shields. Look at all these new colonies. We are just about keeping our admin cap at about the same level as it was before. We're still at 78% technology cost increase, which isn't that much considering how high our tech is getting. So we're getting loads more science, but we're keeping the negative modifier basically stable. Of course, getting that down to 0% would be fantastic, but at the moment, that's a really low increase for how much tech we have. And because of that, our ships are looking glorious. With all those bonuses right now, we are doing an insane amount of damage, and we have very, very strong shields. And even strong armor as well, which is a rarity. And we have ghost worlds again. Yep. Group hug, everyone. All of the L cluster worlds, except for these two, are now colonized. And I'm not sure if we do this and we terraform it, will I lose that resource? Because I don't know that, we're leaving it. And this one over here currently has the colony ship on the way. And I've just realized something. This poor governor. Now I know, I know, we're all part of the Great Collective. We are all part of the Harvester Corps. But this governor is apparently only 10 years old. <laughs> Happy 10th birthday. Now, can you do the easy job of governing 14 planets? Is this the largest sector we have? Yes, by a long shot it is. <laughs> well, you have fun. So, I just had the event, and I wasn't really paying any attention, where you have the subterranean species living on your planet. Every other time, I've went ahead and befriended them. This time... I went ahead and launched a preemptive strike. 
Corpse-filled caverns, corpse-filled mining sites, corpse-filled generator areas, dangerous wildlife. Yeah, ignoring the dangerous wildlife. That's... <laughs> that's pretty mean. On the upside, loads of bonus, um, districts. Actually, you don't need to do this because... Oh, wait, no! Oh, if we turn this into a machine world, we'd lose these. So, is this being a machine world worth one, two, three, four... Five, six extra districts. Some of them also increasing how many mining and energy we have. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, because we would lose these because these are the rare planetary features. They're not only blockers, they're also... Oh, no. Oh, we'll keep the corpses. Fine, fine. It's a machine world. The corpses are resources. Subspace echoes. Several of our tracking stations have picked up peculiar subspace echoes coming from somewhere in intergalactic space. The echoes are faint but getting stronger and they seem to be approaching our galaxy. So this is the Scourge. Now the Scourge have high armor and high health, though I can't remember the exact ratio, which is a problem as I'll discuss in a second. And they deal with shields incredibly well. A lot of their weapons simply ignore shields. So what we need to do is increase our armor of our ships, especially our battleships, since that's the bulk of our legion. So, I was talking about the armor and hull points. And the reason why this is a problem is as follows. If they have equal hull points and equal armor, then it stands to reason that the neutron launchers would be better than the cloud lightning, since the neutron launchers do almost four times as much damage and have bonuses to armor and hull, they're going to literally melt through the armor and then the hull faster than these things will break through the hull. However, if the enemies have higher armor than they have hull points, then cloud lightning might still be the better option because we don't have to bother with the armor at all. So it depends on just how much armor they have. Lots of armor, Cloud Lightning is better, pretty balanced armor to hull, the Neutron Launchers are better, the enemies definitely don't have shields, which means the Neutron Launchers also are looking way better, since, you know, the whole minor shield damage doesn't really matter. Okay. So with that, we continue. And let's make sure to improve our armor. Either way, we need to um, change this to just pure armor. Oh yeah, we can afford the Nanite Repair Systems now. That's a lot of regen. And since we're going to be hitting the armor constantly, that might be really nice. Although the problem is we only have 395 nanites. Will that be enough for all of our ships? I don't think it will. Okay, the breach point is over here, which is actually pretty close to our space. On the upside, there is also a gateway here we can use, so getting over there will only take a moment. Good, good. Well, here we go. And there they are. So there are the smaller fleets. These are the weakest fleets we're going to see. Only 168k. For some reason, I still thought that the um, first wave was a little bit stronger than that. Thought. I can do words. Okay, well, let's have a look at your, your stats then. Okay, so you have essentially double armor. So, yeah, I'm just going to stick with armor-ignoring weapons. If I did the math, though, it would seem like going for anti-armor and anti-hull would be better. But I just really like the cloud lightning weapons, so I'm going to stick with what I've been using anyway. Yep, bonus shield damage, bonus shield damage, and then shield penetration, and bonus everything else. Definitely best we're going for pure armor here. Uh, do I send in my ships now, or do I let them finish upgrading? They're about a quarter of the way done. Well, actually, about a fifth of the way done. It would be nice to get our ships stationed here, stop them from encroaching on this area, since we do have some quite important worlds here. Then any future builds will be built with the better design in mind. Okay, seems reasonable to me. Let's just get them all over there, please, as soon as possible. Then I'll start building some ships in the background. Ah, there we are. There's one of the larger groups. 
Yeah, that's creepy. Okay, there are lots of them. On the upside, I've just checked, and my ships have a plus 180% energy weapon damage. <laughs> yep, we're doing far over double damage now with our lovely cloud lightning. So, hopefully, that'll be enough to kill the enemy. Literally just as they were about to jump, we have jumped in. Yeah, we have just about made it in order to defend this area. Okay, so let's do that, because why not? There's pirates there, because trade, I guess, between this empire that we split, that's fine. Really, we need to go here and here. If we can take these two systems, we've actually completely stopped them from expanding. I'm also upgrading some of these stations here so that we can build some shipyards. This one should almost be ready. Excellent. Just start building some backup um, battleships. More battleships are being built over here. And of course, these ones are using only armor. Fantastic. Get a move on. Construction finalized. They took so many hits. Together we will build a brighter future. This time it's two fleets versus one. Construction finalized. The second wave is here. Hopefully it's the um, same area. Yep, definitely the same area. Wow. That's a lot of numbers. Yep, a lot of numbers. So far, we've killed four fleets total. Though here come some of the larger ones. So in the new fleets, then, I believe they'll also have the queens and such. Am I right? Yes, I am. There we are, brood mothers. Suddenly really wish I had some point defense. Why am I not bringing point defense? Construction complete. So, this is going to look weird.
Well, this is gonna be a fight. Construction finalized. There are just so many! Construction complete. Together we will build a brighter future. So, a couple got through and we're losing systems. On the upside, we have killed a lot of their fleets at this point, so that's good. But I've lost a lot of battleships as well. They take a long time to re Oh no, we've just lost a fleet. Yep, there was a fleet being created there. It got to about 100k, but um... Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to swap over now to a little bit more in the way of mining districts. We still want the uplink node because a little bit of science, but also the menial drones will get more resource. This is the subterranean one, right? No, no it isn't. One of these is okay, that's fine. It doesn't really matter too much, once again. So uplink node, then mineral purification plants. Some of our worlds will also now be transferring into alloy production because honestly we're just not making enough ships i've got about 10 stacked over here this one is about to finish and that's it so i've got maybe 20 30 battleships total currently on the way and that was all of my money earlier now thankfully my energy's back but alloys are still expensive as you can see i've been buying them hence why they're like right at the top of cost right now Together, we will build a brighter future. So, I honestly think we've won. They have one more proper fleet left. They have no hive worlds. At least, none which I can see. But they do have loads of ground forces. Essentially, we stopped them from gaining a foothold. We just kept on fighting them back over here. And there were no usable planets for them. We did really well! Lost a lot of our ships, but we did really well!
Construction finalized. All that's left. The end of the Scourge, and with that, we have won this playthrough. We are the dominant force in the galaxy, our tech knows no bounds, and the enemy, well... The enemy that's left really wouldn't stand a chance against even one of our fleets, and we are still repairing our fleets after that fight, so yeah. I think now is a good time to call this playthrough to an end. That was a lot of fun. Really went off topic. By topic, of course, I meant to say theme. Yeah, we went really far away from the original Harvester idea. I mean, I went here with good intentions to be the ultimate Harvesters, but with the AI still not being quite up to the task, we ended up just being able to snowball. And because of that, I thought, well, we may as well see how far we can go with tech. And we went very, very far. Now, of course, there are much better builds for the, um, well, ju just for tech in general, but I think this went incredibly well. Now, the next time I do a playthrough, there's three options, and some of them can be used with each other. Either A, we finally just use a mod to improve the AI, because that's one thing. I was a little bit disappointed this playthrough, that I didn't really encounter too much resistance. I turned up the aggressiveness, I made sure it was on the highest difficulty setting, and still it felt like I was fighting enemies which were just kind of stagnating, which isn't fun to watch, and it certainly isn't fun to play against, especially when you've been playing for... Oh, about 23 hours I think this playthrough has been. Yep, something like that because of all the micromanaging. Still a lot of fun though. The second option is just to wait until we get more patches and the AI is in a better state. And the final option is just to make the endgame crisis even earlier. Because at the end of the day, in my opinion, everyone plays Dolores differently and with different goals in mind. But my opinion is that the endgame crisis is the real goal of a playthrough, just to defeat the endgame crisis, to be in a position where you are powerful enough to defeat that. And if you're powerful enough to defeat that, you have pretty much won the game uh, via federation, via just domination, having enough resources yourself. There's lots of ways to do it, but in my opinion, that's the end goal. So making this another 50 years earlier, well, that would be absolutely horrendous, and we would be really, really pushed back and probably lose a lot of space and then push back a little bit more and then finally get a bit of their ground. It would be very, very difficult. But for now, I'm going to go and get some sleep because forming words is getting increasingly difficult. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out with me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Now, I did actually have a lot of fun with this playthrough, despite what I was just saying. It's just, I would like to be challenged a bit more. I'm not the best player. I'm not, and I still do so many things wrong. And... I shouldn't win that easily. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. I will improve!